Let us listen to this peace bowl, which is a reminder to us not to be quiet, but that we desire peace. Each morning the sun rises and light gradually fills the darkness. The song we have chosen this morning fills me with happiness. It takes me to my times of being a teenager and my whole life was lying before me. Let us open, I hope you all remembering your favorite kind of morning. Can you all hear me? No. Okay, it says I speak it out early. Please connect. Please connect. Just a moment. Okay. It sounds like you have an internet problem, Bronwyn. Yeah, okay. I'll now switch. you sound good. I can, you can hear me now? Yes, can, you're good. Oh, good, thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to Granite Peak Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Prescott, Arizona. We extend a warm if you're joining us for the first time, please check out our website for more information about us. Prescott uu.org. This is our mission statement. We are a compassionate spiritual community that celebrates diversity, nurtures the personal and spiritual growth of all ages, shares our gifts, promotes justice for all, and serves the world we live in. We extend our thanks to all who contribute in the presentations of our service today. Heather Knowles for technical direction and Mary Lou Prince for musical direction. Although we are physically apart, we're still in community and we continue with some of our meetings and activities via internet now. So please continue to check the weekly peak our website and Reverend Patty's videos for announcements. And join our regular Zoom meetings. Together Wednesday forum, Wednesday afternoon storytelling, and Friday lunch with the minister. Find connection info and other announcements in your order of service. Speaking of announcements, we have several today. <clears throat> Our children's faith development will be today at 11.30 via Zoom, connect with Bev Bostrom. The second, invest in ED, sign a petition to restore funding to Arizona schools from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Granite Peak Unitarian Universalist parking lot today. Marianne Erickson asked me to read the following. Looking ahead to this fiscal year and on June end, I'm sorry, looking ahead to this fiscal year end on June 30th, there are only a couple of weeks to fulfill your FY 1920 pledge, if you've not already done so. Presently, there are 49 pledges that have not yet been fulfilled for a total of $22,115. If you have a question about what's remaining to be paid from your pledge, or you must adjust your pledge, <clears throat> please contact Marianne Erickson or Russ Erickson as soon as possible. Thank you. Get a sip of water before I continue. <clears throat> On Friday, 
June 19th at Watson Lake, our city park at 6.30 p.m. The first Firefly, a benefit concert for Granite Peak UU Congregation will feature music for cello, voice, and piano. Bring your own chair and wear a face mask. And please RSVP to Heather Knowles at Granite Peak UU Congregation. There is limited seating. We begin our service at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of lighting our chalice. <clears throat> Out of the Flames by Sarah Eileen Lawal. Out of the flames of fear, we rise with courage of our deepest connections to stand for justice, inclusion, and peace. Out of the flame of scrutiny, we rise to proclaim our faith with hope to heal a fractured and hurting world. Out of the flames of doubt, we rise to embrace the mystery, wonder, and awe all there is and all there is yet to be. Out of the flames of hate, we rise with the force of love, love that celebrates our shared humanity. Out of the flames, we rise. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the sanctuary of Granite Peak that we are creating together. We know now that we are more than a building. And yesterday I went to visit our building and I saw some of the beautiful changes, new windows on faith development, and those windows look out to a garden that is blooming with bees buzzing and birds singing and vegetable plants growing tall. Plans are underway to make the back of our building a good place for small groups to gather together. Trees have been trimmed, weeds have been pulled, you will hardly recognize it. And in this country, after the death of George Floyd inspired a movement that is continuing to gather force, a man of color, Rayshard Brooks, 27 years old, was shot and killed by an Atlanta police officer Friday night. The sun is rising, the earth is turning, there is beauty, and there is work to do to make this a just world. The earth is forever turning. Let us sing together for the earth forever turning. Now, please join me in saying our covenant. Love is the doctrine of this congregation, the quest for truth its sacrament, and service is its prayer, to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve others in community. Thus do we covenant together. Two weeks ago, I began the story of the bears. 
I will give you a brief synopsis of that beginning, and then we will move into part two, and next week we will have part three. But I began the story of the bears in a year when there was too much rain, and the rain destroyed everything that the bears had to eat. So the bears prepared themselves and they came down the mountain in the direction of a star in the east because they remembered an old legend that the bears had kept for a very long time about a place that waited for them and something about foxes that no one remembered very well. The bears walked and walked, and finally, as they came close to the town called Lucky Field, a farmer spotted them, and that farmer ran around and told the whole village. And when Mr. Middlemountain heard, he ran to the front of his house and beat on the drum hanging by the entrance, boom, boom, boom and the drum sounded through the valley and all the men gathered at the house. And now I will begin part two, and it is important to remember that this story is told by a fox. For hours, the men cleaned and sharpened guns and knives and talked of bear meat eaten raw and how that could make a man out of anyone. The good rices thought of the gallbladder and they asked if just a bit could be reserved for them since it was the only thing that cured everything that had ever ailed them. The talk and buzz reached far into deep valley. By the time that scared bunch of bears knocked so lightly on the stable door where I was sitting, I opened the window wide to them. A sorry lot of travel of travelers they were shuffling along on their sore tired feet. I ushered them into stalls filled with fresh rice straw, and I started a fire on the old brazier to warm their cold paws. Back in the village, the spotting of the bears confused things considerably. The village men were eager to hunt, and the women entertained themselves with stories they had heard in their youth of people ripped apart by bears. The listening children began to scream and cry, and in the process, a bear no longer remained a bear as we know bears, lumbering creatures in their delicately embroidered capes. Bears were transformed into monsters and ghosts, the women and children pleaded with the men to rid the village of the creatures, and the men, glad for something to do together out in the forest, said, say no more. The bears are as good as dead. So as I and your aunties were wrapping wounded feet and feeding the bears a delicious wild mushroom stew. A posse was gathering at the Middle Mountains and Mrs. Middle Mountain was stoking the open hearth and brushing off that special grill she used for wild meats. Each man had his flask of warm spirits sloshing in his pocket as they set out on the moonlit night. Mr. Nowtown led the way in his rice straw cape, showing off a bit as he deftly found the forest paths the others had not maneuvered since childhood, moving by this or that bamboo grove or crooked pine struck chords within the men, and the years between that night and their childhood vanished in the dark. They sang songs of their youth, of crows alone on a fence and the coming snow, and cherry blossoms ready to fall. The medley was so natural 
No one knew a song in its entirety, and when a song was too oft repeated, another song would emerge, and that is how we heard them coming and knew just what to do when the singing stopped in the field next door. We had just put the last bear down for a nap. After the stew, they all yawned and looked longingly at that big pile of hay. We scurried about making large, soft nests for them. And when they lay down, we covered them with their lovely warm capes and tucked the wee ones in with a little lump of sugar for young bears are very fond of sweets. And then we put a layer of straw on top of them all so that if you looked in the door, you simply thought, oh, what a lot of hay. I covered the last embers of the cooking fire and sat with three of your aunties and uncles right on the edge of the pile of hay covered bears. Mr. Nowtown was the first to spy in the window, and when he rubbed it a bit so he could see, he felt that the glass was warm in his hand, and what he saw made him curious. Curious to see more. So he ran around to the front of the stable and jiggled the old rusty door. <laughs> For humans, if you see one fox a year, it is good luck. But if you see four all lounging about, you can be certain that something is up. Seen any bears of late? Swaggered Mr. Middle Mountain. Mushrooms, said Mr. Chestnut. Mushrooms, I smell mushrooms. That is the favored food of bears. And so the story ends for now, to be completed next week. What will happen to those bears? And now I invite you to go from the land of bears to travel a little ways back to our community, to our community as it spreads out into the world. Let us join our hearts together. I invite you to feel the earth under your feet and all those layers, those layers my geologist father understood that contained such history down, 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 hotter and hotter until we arrive at that fiery core. And then as we move upward into those trees we are so blessed with here and up into that clear sky where at night we can find stars. We come each week together in our community bearing joys and sorrows. We also come together in an expanded community of this world. We come today with sorrow, with sorrow that Annette Olson suffered a massive stroke last week. Let us hold her and Jack Stanton and her children in the love of this community. She died yesterday at around four o'clock and I was there outside um, Jack's home when they were talking with the doctors in Phoenix. And I want you to know that they were also able to be with her um, the day before and to spend two hours talking and saying goodbye and let us hold her and this family in love 
And after I left and a daughter wrote to me, she said how much it meant, not that I was there, but that I brought you with me. And I told him of how much you love them and how you are holding them. So I want you to know how much that means to people in this time to have a community and to be able to share in this time. Also, um, last week, Robert Chagog had an angiogram and then had to have another procedure. He is healing well. He is healing well. And we also have joy in this community. Joanne and Mike Fogel were married 64 years ago this past week. 64 years. Let us hold them in joy. Also, I received a text on Friday. Those of you who attended the link breakfast, um, Damaris, who, was, uh, who did the Loteria for us, she wrote to me, she, her baby is coming, a little girl she plans to call Alegria. Isn't that marvelous? Alegria. And the, the baby is a little slow in coming and she asked for my prayers. And I told her that I would ask for yours as well. So please hold, let us hold Alegria and, um, and Damaris also in the love of this community. And now during this time, let us open and expand our we to sorrow at the taking away of health care protections from transgender people. This happened six years after the shootings at Pulse nightclub. This is an awful, awful thing and causing much suffering in this, in our community and as our community is expanding. We also expand our community to Rayshard Brooks, the young man killed in Atlanta. Let us hold him and his family, his loved ones, the city of Atlanta in our hearts. Let us hold our hearts with the activists and visionaries who are imagining a different world where people of color are not at risk of being killed by law enforcement for a $20 bill. What would a world look like if all people were protected as I feel? What would it look like to be a part of a nation that lived up to its promise of freedom and justice for all? I invite you into a spirit of prayer. I am going to read to you, offer to you a prayer written by my friend, Tracy Peterson, a Quaker immigration activist I knew in seminary who offered a virtual vigil for Jose Antonio Elena Rodriguez, the 16 year old murdered through the border fence in Nogales by Border Patrol agent Lonnie Schwartz in 2014. These are her words, and these are my words, and I believe the words of this community. Dear Creator, you know the hearts of everyone affected by the murder of Jose Antonio, a beautiful young man killed in cold blood for Sergio Hernandez Guereca and the recent deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, Ahmed Arbery, and many black and brown people before them, we are broken hearted for all the children who have died before their time, for the mothers and fathers who must try to explain the unexplainable 
for all those who have fallen victim to hatred and inhumanity, for those loved ones who are left behind to mourn and fight for justice. Creator, hear our prayer. For the children who are born into this world of conflict and violence, for women and mothers who suffer needlessly, Creator, hear our prayer for all those who have been forced into unemployment, who long to return to work and receive a living wage, for all those who struggle to support their families, for the new generation demanding structural change and collective liberation, Creator, hear our prayer. For the children who cry in their beds at night and wonder, what have I done? For the police, border patrol, and military agents who allow their uniforms to strip them of their humanity. For those who fight to demilitarize and defund the border patrol, the police, and the military. Creator, hear our prayer our hearts and lives, that we will today and in the coming days work for justice and peace. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer of community. Let us gather our hearts. Let us hold the greater community with our smaller community. Let us extend ourselves out. Let us all walk together. is the time in our service when we normally gather the offering. Let us embrace the feeling of connection and community that we have when we gather each week. Let us remember that this congregation and its programs are supported by your generosity. We also give back to the greater community through our Seeds of Support program. During the month of June, our recipient is the Greater Yavapai County Coalition. Please read about them in your order of service. To give during this distanced time, please go to prescottuu.org. On the bottom left-hand side, click the word donate to contribute. The link is also available in the chat on this video. What is given in love is received in gratitude. Blessed be. Please enjoy and sing along as we listen to the spirit of life. The village that I portray in the bear story, a village that translated was Lucky Field, Spring appeared very early for the farmers. Before we could see it, they could see it. And they would take their, their tools out to their fields and slice through the earth. We would go out to our own field and dig about for those last bits of chard that we could find under an icy layer. This is our song of praise for farmers, for all who work to bring food to our table, for all those that we know now are essential workers for our lives. This is the song of spring.
is so good to see all of you. <laughs> this is one of my very favorite times of the week to just look around and see all of you. And, and I would be looking more, except it would, I would completely lose my concentration. This sermon was inspired by Starhawk's book. The Earth Path, a book I highly recommend. It's a wonderful book for the summer, and it encourages all of us to create our own rituals of connection with the Earth. She speaks of her personal connections, both through her spirituality, her Wiccan spirituality, her environmental activism. She's there on the front lines, willing to be arrested and through her experience of growing her own food. And she maps out ways to, for us to live closer to the earth, to find a grounding, grounding that can support our work of activism. Starhawk invites us, as I did, as I invited you during our meditation, during our joys and sorrows, to ground ourselves, put our feet on the earth, the whole of the earth, considering not just this layer that we see, but all that is there. And then after getting that grounding, and she does this over several pages. She talks of earth walking, where you move into a greater awareness, which is a wonderful way to use a daily walk, if that is what you do as we do. And then she wants you to consider an even wider awareness. And then in that wider awareness, consider our senses. What are we smelling, that marvelous scent of pine needles or sage or rosemary or the many scents that can come to us? What are we tasting from our breakfast? <laughs> what, what are our senses bringing to us? What are their gifts? She encourages us to explore that connection that we have with the earth more deeply. She also encourages us to find a secret place. I had secret places as a child. I could be hidden for an entire day and no one would find me. And I have been thinking now of finding my secret place. There is a place in my garden where there is a pig bench that the people who sold us this home were very afraid we would get rid of, but it is still there. A large pig sitting in the middle of, um, of, of beautiful plants. <laughs> or I wonder about places that you might find, places where the scent takes you away places where you might hear an owl in the evening, or places where in the evening you can look up and see stars. We are so blessed. There are many places around all of us. And find a place, because this work will renew you, revive you, even bring you joy. It will refresh your spring because the work of making change has to be sustained and it can be sustained with such a spiritual foundation. If you think of it, I think that helping ourselves find joy, even in this most difficult of times, and we will always, because we are human and we are not immortal, each of us individually will encounter, are encountering times that are really hard. And I believe that finding joy, no matter what is happening, or just searching for that, even if it takes months and sometimes years, it is a worthy journey. And it is a journey that can even be thought of as 
a kind of subversive way, a subversive reaction to the politics that we that are so upsetting. I encourage you to be subversive and find joy rather than allow the politics to send you into rabbit holes of despair. It is another thing to join the movements than to let ourselves be swallowed up. But this is this spiritual connection, which I believe we can have with joy, is one reason why faith communities are so important at this time. And I believe can be a very important part of this movement that is trying to end the violence to people of color. As George Floyd's brother, Philonies, so eloquently told Congress, is that what a black man is worth? $20? He said to Congress, only if reform can be made could his brother's death have meaning. And then he said to all the people sitting at Congress, and I believe he's saying to all of us, you have opportunity today to make your names worth something. I believe that is true of all of us. We have an opportunity to join this movement that is gathering force to make our names worth something to future generations. You already have so much worth, but I invite you to put on some extra shining this year for there is a great chance for this. Starhawk wrote this about her, about environmental activism, but it is true for now. She said systems change in response to forces that disturb their equilibrium. External forces, changes in conditions, new energies and new challenges can shake up self-regulating cycles. So one way to change a system is to stir it up. <laughs> that is the role of protest and direct action, and it's the reason why stronger forms of action are often necessary to make change. Often necessary, I believe now necessary. In this moment, we have a chance to join such a stronger form of action that holds the possibility of changing the system that has caused suffering for 400 years. If you're thinking, because I'm imagining you talking back to me, if you're thinking that you've been in movements before, you fought against the, you were in the civil rights movement, some of you, you fought against the Vietnam War, you did other things in between, you've been there and done that. I want to say to you, I think you're missing a historic chance to give hope to young people who are all fired up. Your presence will give hope. So I'm asking if you can show up and I will let you know those opportunities. Alice Walker said something that I is burned in my heart because it brings together that relationship between that strong spiritual connection with being on this planet and the joy and the just the the glory of all that is in this planet with activism she wrote activism is my rent for living on the planet let us keep thinking of ways to pay this rent. On the 20th, we have a benefit concert. It's the 19th. Wait, just a minute. I'm so terrible with numbers. Lou's telling me it's the 19th. <laughs> I'm glad she's here. Okay, it's on the 19th at Watson Lake. <sighs> and we have about 20 seats left. Socially distanced um, listening 
and feeling joy. And then the next day we have a solstice. So no, no, it's not the next day. <laughs> it's the 21st. It's two days after that, a solstice celebration. And on the 22nd, a meeting at our building for racial justice. And on the 23rd, outside our building actually. And on the 23rd, Ren and I are sponsoring a panel discussion around the reform of law enforcement, about what it means when we say defunding and abolition. What, what, what are we saying? What is being said now? And we're going to bring experts to answer those questions. And now if we return to our own community, Annette Olson suffered a massive stroke and yesterday she died. We are all remembering our mortality. I, I think when I heard this and Lou and I were talking, one of the first things we said was, no, no one knows when they're going to die. No, we don't know, we never know. I mean, I think this COVID-19 has made um, death seem closer, but the tragedies that, we, that have happened in our community with Mark Tillotson's death, with Arturo Alomar's death, and now, and now with Annette Olson, we're not connected with that. We never know when we will die. But we do know that we have this time. We have this time right now to find meaning, to find joy, to breathe in the clear air, the scent of pines and rosemary and stand for justice. I encourage you to watch, if you have not, the recording of Philonese Floyd speaking before Congress. And when he and his siblings and other people connected with George Floyd spoke at the funeral. And at the same time that all of these things are happening out in the world, I encourage you to think of all the relationships in your life on the telephone, the people you see, build relationships, don't break them down. One aspect of this, which I find myself doing, which is why I'm telling you this, is don't look at people and shame them if they are not social distancing or they're not wearing masks. Move away from them, keep yourself safe, but don't shame them. Compliment people who are wearing masks and keep drawing that circle wide. I often talk about reaching across the divide, about drawing the circle wide, because that has been my life work. Maybe you figured that out the last few months, but it's been my life work within my own family and in places where I have lived. I've always had divides and often I have known, I've had that voice in my head that said, or in my heart that said, Patty, you need to go over to that person and talk with them, or you need to call that person or the relationship will be destroyed or the relationship can then be built if you talk with them. And that is why when we were in Lucky Field, and at first we were Amechan, which is the derogatory word for Americans, because we were the enemy, there was a big uh, memorial in our village to the young men who died in World War II, and my father fought in World War II. But after three years, the villagers um, said, come to this memorial for the war dead and bring your ancestors. But that was the work of three years of reaching across and listening to those voices. So I encourage you, whether someone is wearing a red hat or not, to listen to your minister. <laughs> 
and listen to that voice within that desires this world to become whole and reach out, draw the circle wide. For that character in my bear story, Mr. Nowtown, who ends up being the hero of the story, um, that hero of the story, um, I, I don't think it will spoil it for next week. He lived down the road from us. His name was Imamura, which means now and town. And very soon we heard the stories of how he protected animals. He saved a baby flying squirrel and then an owl keeping them in his house. And he loved to farm and he wore the very old clothing that had been worn for for hundreds of years, that village was about 400 years old, and, and he would wear this, um, these capes made of rice straw when it rained. And he loved to walk out to his rice fields, which were on the edge of this narrow road, this beautiful place. And unlike our neighbor, Mr. Middle Mountain or Nakayama, who loved to hunt everything and really did enjoy cooking wild meat and trying to trick us into eating it, um, Mr. Nowtown was not a hunter. He was a friend to animals, and he was also blessed with a spring that went by his house, and he was able to funnel it into his house for his every need beautiful, pure, delicious water. This meant that he and his family didn't have to drink from the village well that tasted of chemicals that were literally dumped by the big um, carton full by Mr. Nakayama, our neighbor. It also meant that Mr. Nowtown had no interest at all in having water coming to the village. And in order for the city to bring water to the village, every person in the village had to agree. And every year they would gather, and every year the only person who would not agree to have the water come to the village was Mr. Nowtown. So on one level by humans, Mr. Nowtown was hated he would not let us fill containers with water at his house, even though it was abundantly flowing all the time. That was his water. Being in relationship, I discovered in that village, being in relationship for the long haul is really difficult. And now I'm thinking of our country I wonder if we could have the same long view of relationships that they had in that village, not just thinking of a couple of years from now, but for centuries ahead of us. The movements in this country for human rights have often fizzled after a few weeks, a few months, a few years, we get tired, we think that the problem is solved, but we must look at the far view. I wonder what held those people together in that village. They never would have thought of calling in law enforcement to solve a problem. And this is one part of what we're being called upon in these past weeks we're being called upon to have relationships with people around us so that we can talk with them when there's a problem. The villagers knew that destroying relationships with each other would make life impossible. I could just see them arming themselves against Mr. Imamurda, but they, Mr. Nautam, but they did not because they shared water. They shared water for farming. It flowed from one rice field to another. There were terraced rice fields all around the village. And I believe that they were sustained by their habit of being thankful. They were thankful for everything and, the, and I believe that that provided spiritual underpinnings and a wide view that kept making Mr. Imamurda's water problem small enough to keep him and his family within the circle of that village. 
before each meal, the Japanese custom is to say, put hands together and say, itadakimasu, itadakimasu. That means I receive. It is the humble form of receiving. I humbly receive. And what it means is it includes everything that brought that food. The food that was grown because the sun was shining, the rain fell, but not too much. And the hard work of the farmers and the sellers who brought the lemons and the mangoes, itadakimasu. I wonder if all of us could find a ritual. For Lou and me, before a meal, we try to always take a deep breath and then another to stop ourselves from that cycle that we are in, to stop ourselves from thinking or talking and to just breathe and remember what we're thankful for, for all that brought the food to the table. And then we say, thank you. The rituals that connect us with this earth, I believe will sustain us, will keep us with energy for this important work of justice. That arc of justice has gotten a lot of airtime during the past weeks. And I believe we must all hang on it and pull with all our might. This is the time. This is the time. And may it be so. And may you all be well. Let us now sing. Let us circle round for freedom. Let us extend our community to include all those who are suffering right now because of illness, loneliness, death of loved ones, unemployment, worries that a baby isn't coming, that there won't be enough food to feed their family. Let us raise our voices to those who are in power and ask them to hang on that ark with us. And if they don't, to get out of the way. Let us deeply listen to what is in this moment and join history. May we also find time to deeply breathe the air, practice self-love, find joy, so that we will have the strength to pay our rent to this planet. May we be well. May our hearts yearn for justice. May we know just what to do to be happy in this time. Amen. And this song is for you. <laughs> Before we extinguish the chalice, um, and I will wait for the words to come up this time. Before we extinguish the chalice, let us again especially hold Annette and Jack and Robert and Damaris in the love of our community. And I encourage you to send cards um, or call if that is your favorite form of, of connecting. Um, Thank you. And now we can extinguish our chalice and you can go to what I know is your favorite part, which is <laughs> talking with each other. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now I invite you to enter your breakout rooms. Love to you all. Bye.